Room correction is one of those things that can instantly and noticeably improve the audio quality and I'm personally a huge advocate for room correction. So of course I was pleasantly surprised when IK Multimedia announced the Arc Studio, which is a hardware room correction solution. In this video we're going to have a look at the hardware as well as the sound quality and I'm going to also talk about the differences to a software only solution. Hey Julian Krauss here and with me I got the IK Multimedia Arc Studio. Full disclosure, I bought this device with my own money and this video is not sponsored in any shape or form. But you could do me a big favor and follow me on Twitter, the link is in the description. And while you're at it, like and subscribe, that would be much appreciated. Alright, let's have a look at the hardware first before diving into the audio quality and software. As far as I'm aware, you can buy the Arc Studio with and without a measurement mic in case you already own one. I wanted to test the full experience, so I opted for the version with the measurement microphone. So you get the mic, a mic clamp, a USB-C to Type-A cable, the Arc Studio device and a power supply. Let's start with the Arc Studio. The first time I held it in my hands I was pleasantly surprised by the build quality. It has an all metal housing and the correction bypass button has a nice and tactile click to it. The Arc Studio is about the size of a two channel audio interface so it does not take up too much space. On the front you have a power indicator, a signal slash clip indicator and the aforementioned correction bypass button. On that note the bypass is a true bypass meaning that when the Arc Studio is powered off or the bypass is activated the signal is routed straight from the input to the output. This is done by switching a relay which you can hear when pressing the bypass button. In bypass mode the Arc Studio is essentially just a piece of wire and it has no audible effect on the audio which is really nice to see. On the back side you get two XLR outputs which go to your studio monitors or like me an audio amplifier. You also get two balanced audio inputs in form of another set of XLR connections, a USB-C connection to load your correction onto the Arc Studio and a DC barrel connector for power. Now I'm not quite sure why IK Multimedia chose this chintzy 3.5mm barrel connector instead of the more common and robust 5.5mm one. I mean for the most part it's fine but I have noticed that it does not make the best connection and when there's some slight tension on the cable in an unfortunate angle the connection is broken. Then the Arc Studio turns off disconnecting the correction circuit which you can hear by the clicking of the relay. Okay, but I guess you're not here for me to ramble about 3.5mm barrel jacks for the whole video, so let's continue to have a look inside the Arc Studio. My patrons already got to see the internals a while ago and what's great to see is that the hardware looks pretty well made and the AD and DA conversion, which is necessary for the correction, is done with high quality AKM chips. If IK Multimedia has done their homework, this hardware will be able to produce an excellent audio quality, but we'll see about that in the measurements. Just one thing to add about the power connection, I noticed that the Arc Studio is running constantly and in the correction mode it draws about 6.5 watts from the wall. Even when bypassed this only drops to about 5.9 watts. Now the people in the US will likely laugh at this but in the EU this would adequate to an energy cost of around 15 euros a year when running the correction mode which is not negligible. I'm not sure if IK Multimedia could add a standby mode where the device turns off after a few hours of inactivity. Too bad there is no power switch on the Arc Studio. By the way I deliberately placed the Arc Studio on my Loxie A30 because I know that the A30 spews out huge amounts of ultrasonic noise, but the Arc Studio was not affected by this at all. So that was also great to see that the shielding works as intended. Okay, enough about the Arc Studio itself. I just want to give a quick opinion on the measurement mic, which I thought the build quality was a complete joke. I understand that you cannot expect a high quality measurement mic for this price, but this thing is like completely out of plastic, weighs next to nothing and just feels like something out of the dollar store. I mean, look at it opened up. This can't be more than $5 of production cost. If I had paid the full price for this measurement mic, I would have felt ripped off. But I guess you're only going to use the microphone now and then and if it's accurate then IK Multimedia shall be forgiven. So let's have a look at the software and resulting room correction 
and see how it compares to my manual correction via EQAPO. As a first step, you will need to download the IK Multimedia Product Manager and you will need to register to create an account. To be honest, I really don't understand why this is needed. Just let me install ARC4 and then activate it with my serial number. I've already paid for the product. Why do I need to state things like my birthday in country again? And if IK Multimedia ever was to go bankrupt, the ARC Studio would just be a nice paperweight at that point. That's why I have complained about forced registration in the past and I will continue to do so in the future. I know I might be a bit stricter here than others, but this alone could be a showstopper for you. After setting up my account, I got an error message telling me that my download path does not work. This is a quick fix, just select your default download folder in Windows, but that's definitely a bug and IK Multimedia should fix that. I then opened ARC4 after the installation through the product manager and a half hour troubleshooting session began, as the ARC Studio was not recognized by my PC. Took me a while, but I switched from the USB-C port on my PC to a USB-A port, and then the Arc Studio was immediately recognized. This is really strange because this just happened on one of my PCs. On the other one, a straight USB-C connection worked just fine. The included cable with USB type A worked every time, so that's how I recommend you use the Arc Studio. After this bumpy start, I could begin with the calibration. What I really like here is that the whole process is guided, and even if you have no prior experience to room correction, you will be able to complete all the steps with ease. First, you select the measurement mic you use, in my case, the IK Multimedia one. Next, you select your audio in and outputs, which is the Steinberg IXO in my case. I still had it laying around from the prior review. You can check that out on my channel if you want. Then you select what you want to calibrate, be it a bigger studio with client seats or a smaller area for a small studio, like in my case. You will then need to set up the output volume and mic gain on your interface and can then choose between the 7 or 21 point measurement mode. The 7 point mode is obviously quicker and the 21 point measurement more precise. As you likely don't do this that often, I recommend the 21 point measurement option and it does not really take that long, just a couple of minutes really. With the 21 point mode, you will measure different heights as well. And in both cases, you will have at least seven measurements like shown here in the diagram. After you are done, you can give the calibration a name and it will then pop up in ARC4. You can now see the uncorrected response in green and the corrected response in orange. But you're not completely done yet. First of all, you will need to set the target curve that you want to correct to. In the target dropdown, you have a few options available, but I was a bit surprised to not find something like the Harman Preferred Listening Curve in here. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but flat is most definitely not what you want to go with, as this leaves you with a very bright sound that lacks in bass. Control room contour or warm tilt already go in the right direction, but I would personally dial in a curve like this. If you are in the edit tab, you can click on each control element and dial in the following settings if you want to resemble the Harman curve closely. The control in the bass area could be used to dial in your preferred amount of bass. You will also need to dial in the low range. Otherwise the software will try everything to boost the output to hit the target curve. But of course smaller monitors will not be able to reproduce very low frequencies and this heavy boost will lead to distortion due to heavy excursion of the driver. As you can see my small speakers have a natural roll of about 80 Hz and there are hardly any benefits in boosting the output below that. So I have adjusted the low range to not boost very low frequencies. Sadly this only means that the ARC Studio will not do any correction below 80 Hz but ideally you would want to have a high pass filter to relieve smaller monitors of the burden of reproducing deep bass. I hope this is something IK Multimedia can add in the software in the future. Generally speaking, there is not much you can dial in in terms of EQ settings. The measurement is done automatically and then adjusted to the set target. So if you are someone who really likes to fine tune every single filter of your correction curve, you might not be so happy with ARC4. Lastly, remember to click store as this saves the correction file directly onto the ARC Studio and you can even disconnect the USB connection at that point. But it makes sense to keep it connected as this gives you the possibility to quickly toggle between different corrections via the software. This also allows you to use virtual monitoring effects which replicate the sound of different studio monitors 
or things like a TV or a smartphone, and this can be handy to check how your mix translates on other devices. Now that we got the correction in place, how is the sound and how does it compare to my manual approach? Here you can see the uncorrected response first and then the corrected curve measured at the listening position. For a comparison, here is the manual curve that I have dialed in already years ago via EQ APO. It probably shouldn't come as a surprise that the corrected curves look extremely similar. The Arc Studio just has a tad more bass. But it's still great to see that the automatic correction has essentially come to a very similar sounding conclusion than my manually finessed curve. Yeah, I can say that the corrected audio with the Arc Studio sounds much better than the uncorrected response. In my case, you can see that I had quite a bit of upper bass and mid frequency boost, which resulted in audio that sounded kind of boxy and nasally when uncorrected. But with the correction in place, it sounds much more even and natural. On that note, you might ask yourself the question why do I want to go with a hardware room correction solution in comparison to a software only solution? For me, it simply comes down to robustness. EQ APO, for example, is a great tool, but it only affects Windows playback and everything via ASIO bypasses the correction, which for music production completely defeats its purpose. Of course, there are also other plugins or standalone software products out there, but they always rely on the software being active and working correctly. With a hardware solution, you just set it up once and then any signal coming from your interface running through it is going to be equalized, you don't have to worry about any software and it just works. I deliberately pushed the electronic measurements to the end because they are actually really boring and I mean that in a good way. The Arc Studio outperformed my audio analyzer, but as you can see there is nothing to complain about. The frequency response is really flat when the Arc Studio is bypassed, which isn't a big surprise but also when running through the AD and DA conversion. The only thing to note here is that the Arc Studio is only running at 96 kHz. So if you're someone who believes in high-res audio and you need true 192 kHz playback, then this is not for you. For everybody else, this is totally fine. Distortion-wise, you can also see that the Arc Studio has very much inaudible amounts of distortion with and without the correction. Noise-wise, we are looking at a dynamic range in excess of 117 decibels, and I would argue that this is transparent, meaning that besides the correction that is applied by the Arc Studio, you are not going to hear any change in sound. Because you are running the signal through an AD and DA conversion, there is some amount of latency. But with the filter in natural mode, this is only 1.4 milliseconds, which is negligible in most cases. Only if you choose the linear mode, the latency rises considerably, clocking in at 44.1 milliseconds. This is definitely audible, but for room correction you want to stay with the natural mode anyways, so that's totally fine. Alright, so what are the pros and cons of the Arc Studio? On the plus side, it's nice to see a proper hardware solution, which in my experience can be more reliable than a software-only solution. It's also nice to see that it has a true bypass option, which completely bypasses the correction and AD and DA conversion. The build quality is mostly excellent, the Arc Studio has a full metal housing and the hardware besides the measurement microphone feels very solid. The audio quality is top notch, in the measurements you could see that the audio is transparent, both bypassed and with the correction turned on. I would also say that the Arc Studio is pretty beginner friendly as the whole measurement process is guided and even if you don't have any prior knowledge in room correction, you can achieve good results very quickly. But this brings me to the downsides. If you are somebody who really likes to dial in the correction and play around with every single filter, the Arc software currently does not let you do that. On that note, here are a few more software related things which are a downside right now but might be changed in the future. I was missing a high pass filter to alleviate my small monitors of deep bass, there was an unnecessary error in the download path, there was also an issue with USB-C on one of my PCs, and why do I have to create an account to use the software? Stop that. Hardware-wise I would have wished to also have a subwoofer output with a crossover which would have made it super easy to use the Arc Studio in a 2.1 system. Maybe this is something for a future product. I would have also liked to see a second button on the front to quickly toggle between different audio presets. You can do that via the software, but why would I buy a hardware solution and then be forced into having the software open all the time to change the profiles? That 
doesn't make much sense to me. And lastly, I'm missing an auto standby feature here because at least right now the Arc Studio is constantly pulling 6.5 watts from the wall. The last thing to consider is price. The Arc Studio costs about double of what your typical entry level audio interface costs, so in that regard it's not cheap. And I'm leaning myself out of the window here, but I have the feeling that it won't be too long until we also see audio interfaces with built-in room correction. But if you already have an interface and you want to benefit from a hardware room correction, the Arc Studio might be exactly what you're looking for. Okay, like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.